Well, good afternoon, guys. It is June 5th, and I'm back in the Wasatch, and I think I came up a little bit too early to find anything cool again. Whatever, let's see if we can find at least a couple of wildflowers that are ever interesting plants that I can identify. Well, right off the bat, the first plant here that I'm pretty sure I can identify is this guy. This is Twinberry Honeysuckle, or Lonicera involucrata. And I can tell us this plant because, firstly, it's in a riparian area. So the river just back there, about 20 feet away. Secondly, it has opposite leaves. That's definitely characteristic of all the honeysuckles and other members of the family Caprifoliaceae. And we can also see that it's got pale grayish bark, which you can get a good view of right here. It doesn't have a typical red bark you see on red osier dogwood, which I don't really see growing here. Actually, that might be it way down on the riverbanks, but that's not what's important. What's important is that this is really the only ever really common species you'll find at this elevation growing along riverbanks with opposite leaves. So that's a pretty good indicator that's what we're talking about. You can see, which is quite likely gonna be the inflorescence producing two flowers and later the characteristic twin berries. Technically perhaps the smallest inflorescence possible because an inflorescence is basically any cluster of flowers. So I guess the, technically the least flowers an inflorescence can have is two. However, it's not a whole lot of plants quite in bloom right now. Just a few that are starting to get into bloom where we can start seeing what the flowers look like. This is another one right here. This I'm pretty sure is Sambucus racemosa. I mean, the only other thing it could be is Sambucus Saralea, and the inflorescence looks very, very racemose. And this seems to be at, at the more of the elevation, the um, Sambucus racemose, I think that's the red elderberry, while the other one is the blue elderberry, is found that. Of course, opposite branches, an extremely light, pithy wood. What else? Okay, I'll, I'll, let's see what else we can find going further up. I definitely think I came out a little too early to find that much that's interesting. There's still a couple of things here that are at least interesting to me. Firstly, in this patch of land where I think the snow melted only a week ago, if even that, all these plants are starting to grow already and get a head start on the growing season. They waste absolutely no time growing here because they can't afford it. They have to. Soon enough, and I just have a few months, it'll be autumn and time to go dormant again. You can already tell what a few of them are. That must be a species of geranium, either um, Richardsonii or I think Viscosinium, I can't remember what the two common geranium species are, but one has, typically has white flowers and never has pink flowers, so almost impossible to tell what they are now. This guy with the almost clo weirdly clover looking leaves, I know it doesn't look quite like a clover, but it reminds me of one, is Philictrum fenleri. It's a member of the family Ranunculaceae. I think the common name for that genus is meadow rue. We also have that one I'm pretty sure is a Polymonium foliosissimum, called them as a leafy Jacob's ladder. Looks like a member of the pea family, but it's not, and those, um, the flowers, once you see them later in the year, will be quite clearly not members of the pea family. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, this is probably Heraclea maximum, or perhaps Heraclea lanatum. I can't remember what the most appropriate common name is of a plant, but it's a really cool one. It's a member of the carrot family. It can get up to like eight feet, maybe 10 feet tall, sometimes even taller in the right conditions. Anyways, though, it's not entirely possible to tell what every species is right now at this place. This, I think, is, for instance, Hydrophyllum capitatum, but I just really don't know for sure. Actually, I'd actually say I'm 80% sure, but I just can't entirely know. I certainly have no idea what this plant is, but well, it looks kind of interesting. So, the mat of aspen leaves will slowly break down over the summer and nourish all the plants here, and even some of the trees that they fell from. That, of course, has to be done by fungi. Saprotrophic fungi, specifically, that just means fungi that um, break down already dead tissue. Finally, right here, another interesting thing, I think, is Abies laciocarpa, or alpine fir, must have fallen pretty recently. You can tell it fell recently because, firstly, it's all still very green, and the needles are flexible, and they're probably still alive, in fact, so it could have been, I don't think it was more than a few weeks ago. Also see that it's not embedded in the snow bank that's lying on top of it all. It's just sitting there, and a lot of the needles that are decaying are just falling right on top of it, and they don't seem to be embedded in it at all, so it definitely, there's not been a major snowfall since it has fallen there. You can see where it fell between two quaking aspen trees. Really friend of the needle there. And once we get up here, we can see that the tree, at least where the region it snapped, does not look very diseased at all. It just looks like regular wood. So I can get a good view of it. 
but um, yeah, right here. Oh my God. Yeah, it's just like regular wood. It doesn't seem like it's rotted or soft at all. Um, let's see if focus a little better. It certainly doesn't feel soft or anything. I think it just, the tree just got unlucky, was hit by a strong gust of wind that knocked it over. Or I should say snapped it off because we can see right where it broke up there. Um, the tree is more than 25 feet tall right now after that. It'll be very interesting to see in the coming years if it survives or not. I'm guessing, I think it'll survive for a few years, but it's definitely gonna have problems growing straight up again. Now this spot seems kind of mundane, but to me it's actually really cool because I can give you another lesson on applied landscape reading. Because here we can tell that there was an avalanche over the winter. There's all the smashed and scattered about branches from an alpine fir. Some fairly large ones in the river right there as the snow melts. Some aspen branches that came down here. Must have been a big flow of snow that just ran down the ravine out onto there. See that all these um, trees sort of bent down, so it might be a regular thing that happens. So I'm bent down hills, what I mean. So all the branches that are broken and scattered between the uh, twinberry growing there. And onto the trail as well. It's incredible to see. It must have been so much power just coursing through this tiny ravine. Hope we can find where it actually comes from. And I really like this feature up ahead there, this arch where you can see the river's flowing through. It's like an arch of snow that sometimes forms. It's so cool when this happens. I love to do it. I'm, I'm not going to walk on top of it because it's probably unstable, but it's really neat to see. I might be standing over air right now. Oh, dang, see if I can... There we go. Incredible. I'll take a step back from this ledge here. And hopefully we can find the tree that this all came from up ahead. See a bit more of what I'm talking about right here with the branches showing all up and down the river on the little hill. Incredible. Can't tell what species it came from exactly, but it must have been a good sized tree that got knocked over. Hmm. Not sure I'm gonna find the actual tree. It just came from right about there, but oh well, I'm glad I saw that. I won't make the whole hike worth it. Some more hits right here. That's gotta be Mertensia ciliata, commonly known as the uh, mountain bluebells. Uh, this one you can even see the not yet open drooping flowers. Very nice. Oh yeah, this is the Red Ozier Dogwood for comparison. I haven't seen any of my other videos and have no idea what it looks like and don't know about it, I talk about it way too much. You can see it's definitely a different looking plant than a twinberry honeysuckle. Hmm. Well, that's a big flat area. Snow. Some of those branches scattered on it. Maybe a tree came from further up. Yeah, it's obviously supposed to be a river right now. I mean, it is, it's just that it's covered in snow. A big channel underneath, and in a couple of weeks it'll be totally open.
It may have been an avalanche all the way from up there, in fact. I don't think I'll ever know for sure. That's, now we can see back where it came coursing through. But just in case I don't find anything else cool on this trail, I want to end on a nice note. This is Viola purpurea, which is a species of violet that is native and is actually yellow. Seems kind of strange, but that's just the fact. Violets can sometimes not be violet. You know, it's actually the um, color that was named after the flower, not the other way around. And what sets violets apart is really their interesting zygomorphic or bilaterally symmetric form they have here. They are not radially symmetric like most flowers are. And that's really neat, I think. It's kind of an interesting thing for them. Of course, they're also just typically very low growing herbaceous plants like this. There's quite a few species of violet, many of, and a few that are native as well, but um, not all of them are purple. Some are white, some are of course yellow, as I just showed you, and some are even a couple other colors. Thanks for watching and see you next time.